Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna do a walkthrough for a quasi-linear, actually a quasi-log linear utility maximization problem, and then investigate what happens when the price falls to the point, or when the income falls to the point where the consumer can only afford one unit of the good. And I'm actually, at the end of the video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna develop some kind of important logic to reinforce that uh, concept, as well as to import some ideas from perfect subs preferences that can be really useful in problems like this and more generally. So you probably want to stick around to the end to see that. Uh, okay, so suppose we have Bob with quasi-linear utility, and suppose the utility is just given by this. We have two goods, good one, good two, Q1 and Q2 are corresponding to the amounts of good one and good two that we're consuming. These preferences are linear in good one and they're log in good two. So it's gonna be Q1 plus four times the natural log of Q2. And we said, we'll say Bob's income is 80, and then the price of good one is 10, price of good two is 10. We wanna find the marginal rate of substitution, MRS. We wanna find the optimal choices of good one and good two for Bob. And then we wanna figure out what happens if Bob, Bob's income falls to $10, right? That it only allow Bob to consume one unit of each, or one unit of good one or one unit of good two, sorry. So then we want to find what's going to be the optimal Q1 and Q2. Okay, so the first thing we could do is you could write out the Lagrangian. You could take the partials with respect to Q1, Q2, and the lambda. Then you'll uh, solve the system of equations, plug into budget constraint, and you'd get your you would uh, get our tangency condition, plug into budget constraint to evaluate, and you'd get your optimal choices. So let's take a look at that. Here is my Lagrangian function. This is going to be a function of the amount of good one, amount of good two, and then lambda. So this is the objective function. This is the utility function portion. And then this is the constraint. So this is constrained optimization. We are gonna maximize the objective function subject to this constraint. So this is just the familiar utility function from above. This is the budget constraint. And then lambda, this is like the penalty for violating the budget constraint. When would, so utility, presumably, we consume more, act, more, more of good one, more of good two, that's gonna raise our utility, right? Uh, when would we, when, what would, what would, what would uh, deduct from our utility? Well, if we violated this constraint, right? If we, maybe if the expenditure on good one plus the expenditure on good two was $81, then we would, deduct lambda from whatever would be our utility, right? This is the penalty for violating the constraint. Okay, so now I've taken the partials with respect to Q1. So that's just one partial over here. This is gonna just be a 10 minus lambda equals zero. And then the partial with respect to Q2. Remember the derivative, partial derivative, the derivative of natural log is just one over the argument. So derivative of this thing is gonna be one over Q2 times this four. So it's gonna be four over Q2 and it's gonna be minus uh, one of these four, one of these 10 lambdas. Derivative here with respect to lambda, that's just the constraint portion, right? So you're always just gonna get the budget constraint. Now I'm gonna solve my system of equations here and then think about evaluating, but the budget constraint, we'll see kind of how that works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I need to get my marginal rate of substitution. That was part A. Marginal rate of substitution is just the, the marginal utility of good one divided by marginal utility of good two. Notice how I've written this, right? So this right here, this is like, mu1, this is mu2, this is like price of good one, this is price of good two. We're almost like literally staring at MRS equals price ratio, just how we wrote this. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, so marginal utility of with respect to good one divided by marginal utility with respect to good two. Well, marginal utility of good one was one, marginal utility of good two, that was the partial with respect to good two, that's this right here. Divide a fraction by a fraction is the same as multiplying the fraction by the reciprocal of the denominator fraction. So this gives me the MRS is gonna be Q2 over four, right? And that's why like you're staring at this, you're like, wait a second, MU1, that wasn't Q2, and MU2, that wasn't four. No, what happened was MU1 was one, MU2 was this, and then MRS is mar ratio of marginal utilities. It boils down to Q2 over four, right? Anyway, so we have found our MRS, I'm gonna, I'm gonna equate this to our price ratio, which is like 10 over 10, that's one, right? So we're gonna have our tangency condition or what would typically be our tangency condition. I put it in, in scare quotes, right? And so solving, we have Q2 is equal to four, which is telling us, you know, we don't have anything to substitute just yet to find the optimal selection of good two. This is how much Bob wants. Bob wants four units of good two. We have to figure out how much good one the Bob wants. What are we gonna do? We have to exhaust the budget. So Bob is gonna buy four units of good two. 
Bob's got money left over, and to be optimizing, Bob needs to exhaust Bob's budget. So we're going to have 10 times Q1 plus 40 equals 80, which tells us that after spending 40 on good two, Bob is going to have 40 left over to spend on good one at a rate of 10 per good one. Bob is going to buy four units of good one. Okay, so Bob's optimal selection is to buy four units of each when prices are 10 for each good and Bob's income is 80. Now I'm going to say, suppose now Bob's income falls. Bob can only, uh, Bob's income is only $10. What does Bob do? Well, let's start by comparing the MRS to the price ratio. And the reason why I want to start here is what's changed? Only income, right? So Bob's preferences didn't change at all. Our Marginal rate of substitution isn't going to change. It's still this. Our price ratio, not going to change. It's still this. So let's just stare at this and compare MRS to price ratio. And then let's think about, wait a second, with $10, what's Q2 going to be? At most, it's going to be one, right? So like Bob spends all $10 on Q2. Remember, the price of price of Q2 was, was 10. Sorry, I hate to scroll up here, but the price of Q2 is 10, right? So, at mo so if Bob's exhausts its budget, if Bob exhausts Bob's budget on good two, Bob's MRS is going to be one fourth versus one, which tells us the slope of the indifference curve is going to be flatter than the budget constraint. So if Bob buys one unit of good two, that exhausts the budget. Sorry, I have to kind of duck around my microphone. Uh, marginal rate of substitution is one fourth. The price ratio is one. So we have flatter indifference curves relative to a steeper budget constraint. Now let's think a second. Let's borrow the intuition from perfect subs. So here's the picture from perfect subs. And if Bob had perfect subs preferences and the MRS was bigger than the price ratio, this would give us an all X, our Alex solution, right? Well, that's not close to what's happening. Instead, we have the opposite. Here we have the MRS is smaller than the price ratio. That tends us towards this all Y solution, our alley solution. Why? Well, if we want to be on the highest indifference curve possible, this is going to move us up and to the left along our budget constraint. So Bob's situation is actually a lot more like this one, which tells us that what Bob's actually going to want to do is consume more of good too, given the chance. Okay, well, with $10 available, Bob can consume exactly one unit of good too. So what Bob's going to do optimally, Bob will buy that one unit of good too, and then zero units of good one. So uh, last thing I want to say is, look, here we're borrowing intuition from perfect subs. That's completely valid to do because this this relationship, MRS compared to price ratio, that's just our optimization principle. We're always comparing one to the other. And anytime the MRS is going to be steeper than the budget constraint, you're going to want more of whatever is the horizontal access good. And anytime the MRS is flatter than the budget constraint, you're going to want to increase your consumption of your vertical good or our good too in this case. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed. Hope that helps.